Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I got another trivia video for you. I've said this in other lives and stuff like that before, but I want to make it official in the video. What is the connection between the TV show MASH and uh, somewhat forgotten Disney classic live action comedy in the 70s when they weren't, when they were only doing okay? They were, they were kind of struggling. The Cat from Outer Space. So what is the connection between MASH and the Cat from Outer Space? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, basically, what happened was, uh, whenever the Cat from Outer Space came out, McLean Stevenson wanted to leave the show MASH and go on, uh, and pretty much go on his own because he felt like he was being like, he didn't want to get stuck in the sitcom and he wanted to try do some other stuff. And he was offered a sitcom on NBC called Hello Larry. Well, I liked Hello Larry. I thought it was funny, but it was a huge flop, right? But he went to be in the movie Cat from Outer Space because he was, he was used, I mean, whenever McLean Stevenson left, you saw him pretty much in a lot of stuff for like a year. And then that was kind of like it. But he played like a supporting character in the Cat from Outer Space. He was like Fred Berry's friend. And Fred Berry was like the star of the show, I think. And then, along with that, the guy in charge of the military was played by Terry Morgan, who played Colonel Potter, who was his replacement. So both McLean Stevenson, who left MASH, was in Cat from Outer Space, and Harry Morgan, his replacement, was also played a smaller part in Cat from Outer Space, and then went on to replace his character, uh, and he was Colonel Potter, of course, on MASH. So there you go. That's my trivia of how MASH and the Cat from Outer Space are kind of related in its own bizarre way. So hope you like this little trivia video, everybody. Till next time, please take care of my legion. True stuff. I mean, and I liked, and the Cat from Outer Space, if you get a chance, I don't even think it's on Disney+. Plus. I think the kids, I don't know if the kids would like it or they'd be bored. But I thought it was really well. It was well done because I remember seeing it. It came out 77, 78, I think. And it was, they had a lot of really good stunts and stuff like that. But like back then, Disney was struggling with, uh, with like movies because their movies weren't doing that well. And they didn't, and they, they started to, well, I mean, I don't feel bad for Disney because Disney's got all the money in the world, especially now. But I mean, and then they went in to venture in the first PG rated Disney film, Black Hole, and people were mad about that. And that was like, they pumped like 40 minutes, and it, it, it didn't do well, but I saw it at the theater driving, I liked it. Except for really one, one super fake shot, but aside from that, it was a great movie. But Disney didn't really have a hit till, again, till The Little Mermaid, which I did not, I still have never seen it. In 88, I think. And then Disney, oh, no, 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 I'll take that back. Disney had a, Disney actually went further and started, um, Touchstone Pictures, which had R-rated movies like Down Out Beverly Hills and Roots of the People, and those movies did really well. For and that was under the Buena Vista label. But Disney was having problems for a while because a lot of those movies like, let's see, um, a forgotten movie like No Deposit, No Return came for a week and then they were gone. And I, I and that's a tough one to find. I saw that a long time ago on Encore because they showed a lot of the older, lesser known Disney uh, live action movies like North Avenue or Regulars or that Robinson Caruso one with Dick Van Dyke in it and uh, what else was there well, I mean when they started doing PG I think Devil and Max Devlin did okay I think that was actually in Fangoria Magazine believe it or not I think that did okay but like I said it wasn't until Little Mermaid they started to rebound and then do, do really well again I mean but I mean well the stuff from Touchstone did well, too. I keep forgetting did the end Touchstone, you know. And then they did other off-brands like they did Hollywood Pictures. I can't remember Hollywood Pictures. And I'm in the, I can't remember. There was a couple other ones. But, I mean, that was the connection. I, I'm going off on tangent again. But that was the connection between uh, the Cat from Outer Space and MASH. There was a connection between the two. So hope you like this trivia video, everybody. Until next time, please take care of my legion. But I mean, I th I don't know if the kids will like Catch My or they would be bored by it, but I, I enjoyed the movie. It's a fun film. 
I don't know if they ever remake it. They remade Shaggy DA, and it was okay. But I think Tim Allen's star power helped that one. They did a remake of That Darn Cat, which I never saw. I don't know if that was a hit or not. But like I said, uh, Disney would lose the money. The 80s was not a good... Later 70s and 80s were not a good time. Till, well, till down out Beverly Hills, and then uh, Little Mermaid came out. But, I mean, I don't feel Disney has all the money in the world now, so I don't feel bad for them now. But they were there was a time when they were struggling. But, I mean, I don't think Half Mile of Space did that well either. But, I mean, I remember Unidentified Flying Oddball. I wanted to see it, you know. Or One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing. That's the one no one ever talks about. That movie was awesome. I saw the Dad wanted to see that. We saw the West Street Platte because they were playing some of the... Westery Play. I think it was at the Westery Play. We saw that. And we saw that. The um, oh, and Catherine Mouse played Westery Play along with. I don't know if it was a re-release of the Rescuers. They played that there too. But I mean, Disney were well, like, you know, they were, they there was a time when they were struggling some, and then I think they they were criticizing Michael Eisner a lot, and then they took off. They they had uh, they used to have the Wonderful World of Disney on NBC. At like 7 o'clock, Sunday nights. And then it was gone for a while. Then they brought it back on uh, Sundays at 7 or 8. I can't remember. And those ones weren't very good. Except they had Mr. Boogity and Bride of Boogity. Mr. Boogity, was, I mean, I actually reviewed those too. You, I don't know if they're on Disney Plus. Because Disney Plus is kind of selective. They don't put all, they didn't put all the stuff on it. I don't think ever, Unidentified Flying Oddball was like a take on... Uh, well, uh, Night in King Arthur's Court. And that was a fun movie. But, I mean, that came when I was gone. Like, what happened? I always wanted to see it. And it took forever to see. And then they had, like, Watch in the Woods. And Something Wicked This Way Come. I would love to see that again. They may have that on Disney+. Plus. And Watch in the Woods. I mean, Watch in the Woods and Something Wicked. They would come both PG rated. More like horror movies, though. I don't know if the kids like And they had Return to Oz. Which people skewered. That was PG rated. And that was very grim and... Kind of scary for kids. I don't know if the, how well that did, but I like that was a, I liked that movie too. It was interesting. I liked that pumpkin creature they had. So see, I'm going on a tangent again, but that was a correlation between Walt, between Mash and Captain Mouse Space. So I hope you liked the video. Bye till next time, please. The Camera Legion. Hopefully the microphone got it. Everything good.